Welcome everybody. This series or this video today is going to be on microservices and Docker. The reason I brought these two together is there's been a lot of questions on what to use tools and how the infrastructure is set up. Uh, so I'll start with the architecture and that is microservices and then I will deep dive into lower level of a tool in this case is Docker. So let's begin. So in order to stand, understand microservices, first you have to go back to when applications were really deployed in one central place called a monolith or monolithic type of structure. And here's a, here's a meme that I found on the internet. Uh, it's kind of a, a joke. Now, I, I want to preface this with saying that there are pros still to a monolithic uh, structure. I won't get into the monolithic too much today because we're going to talk about microservices. But the reason that microservices started is because everything was piled on to one ship. And what they're saying here is by checking load balancer, it's not really a problem with the load balancer. It's that everything is piled on to one ship. And if you have a failure, everything goes down. And then the question is, how do you solve for that? And why do we solve for that? So we solve for that by basically breaking everything up into its own components. So think of multiple ships here traveling and, and shipping their own containers. Now there are pros and cons to this. I won't get too much into that. But for scalability, this really became a huge advantage. So an example, which I'll get to, is Amazon and Netflix. They really needed this type of availability. So here's an architecture diagram that diff showing the difference between the two. Over here on the monolithic side, you have everything built together on one server, one database, all of your features, all of your UI. And when developers are Generally, this will grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you'll start to have more teams, more developers, all in the same server. And this, as you can imagine, this becomes a challenge on deployments or causing problems with performance. So in order to do that, you really had to break it up into multiple components. So that's where microservices comes in. You have separate features, separate components, all on different servers and databases. And then they communicate to each other on each node communicates to each other through network. So why do we need these? So here's a couple great examples. As Netflix started to grow, as you can see this graph here showing all its availability across the globe, you can imagine how many services they would need to support the number of users and requests that they're getting. And same thing for Amazon as it grew, it needed to be more dynamic. And if you're interested, take a look at this talk. It was uh, really useful. It was basically Netflix pioneering how this worked. And he talks about all of his challenges that he faced and how they overcame them. It's down at the bottom of my deck that you can reference it. And also I'll add it to the description. So here's another also video I added, but this just image shows you what microservices are. And if you think of this as more of the server, you're virtualizing, but here you expand, you'll see you have all the components you need to deploy your application. So this might be one feature. This may be another feature. And then each of these can be deployed separately. And each team can manage the different container by themselves. And as you can see at the top, we have all these happy users still connecting the same way. So let's look a little bit more inside of a container. So Docker, Docker is the tool that creates containers. That's what we're gonna look at today. So as you can see here, it's basically a list of libraries or a kernel with all of the uh, things that you need. You have your database, you have your Tomcat server, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a demo on how to, to modify. Start it up, modify it, and close it. One more tool to note, which may I may go into a, in a future talk, is how do you keep these containers in sync? So you have your dev, your QA, your prod. Not only that, but you also need to deploy these uh, components within the container in unison. So if you have dependencies 
that need to deploy all together, this is where the orchestration comes in. And Kubernetes, developed by Google, is a really popular tool. It's been open sourced and the, most of the, the market uses it. There's also Docker Swarm, which uh, they each have their pros and cons. So you can check those out. So let's get into our demo. First, what we're going to do is I'll briefly show you how to set up a virtual instance and this is a great way to go and explore and muck around and you can change and do whatever you like. So we're going to do a Red Hat virtual instance, it'll take a few minutes. Then we'll install Docker on to the server, we'll check the status, we'll enable it and we'll start it. That's all the things you need to do to get going. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the repository for available packages, in this case we're going to search for Apache, which is a web server. We're going to pull it down and install that library. Then we're going to look at the image and the info. So you can look at the component of the Docker info and just kind of get a summary of what, what's happening. Next, we're going to start the, the Apache server on 8080. We're going to give it a name and a location. Then, to check it out and make sure it's working, we're going to edit the HTML, the home page, with our own text. We're going to start the HTTP service. Then we're going to check that makes check to make sure it's running. And there's a few other tools that you can also look at the Docker image, such as inspect or, or PS, which is process. And then lastly, we'll exit out of the image and remove it and make sure it's stopped. So those are the steps. Let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's log into Google Cloud. I'll start over here. Go to your console. First thing we're going to do is, I'll show you the wizard so you can create your own virtual server. So let's go to compute. Uh, the easiest way to get there is just type compute. Okay, let's uh, create instance. One thing that Google is also doing and other cloud providers is they actually have this deploy a container image directly in the virtual instance. So if you click on this, you have a more advanced options. I have not done this yet, but it's a very useful feature. It's, again, providing another virtualized layer with less management. Because as you imagine, if you get 50 to 100 of these, it just becomes a nightmare to run through all the steps that we're doing. But I wanted to give you a lower level of how these actually work. So in order to, to make sure they run properly, you do have to understand how they run. So for here, what I, the only thing I changed was I ran a Red Hat, Red Hat 7 here. You also see here there are container optimized with Kubernetes server that you can use. I left everything else to the default one CPU. There's almost four gig memory. Same default zone, change your name. And that's it. So you can create the instance and away you go. So let's go back. I have one created. And what's nice about here is all you need to do to connect is connect through your browser, open the browser window. I already have it open, so let's switch back to here. All right, so I have sudo to root. I'm in as root. And if you want to follow along, the commands are in my presentation, which I'll reference here. So basically do a sudo uh, su-root and then we're going to install docker. So yum minus y install docker. As you can see I already have it loaded so it's already ready to go. Next we're going to check the status. So system CTL status. System control. Yeah, status docker. Okay, and here you can see it's already running. So I've already run through these steps. Next, let's, if you haven't done this, 
through the system, CTL, enable Docker. Okay, that's already been run. And then start Docker. Okay, now it's started. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the package of Apache, but first we're gonna search. So we're gonna search uh, Docker, uh, Docker search Apache, sorry. Okay, here is, you have some ratings, you have, uh, this is whether it's trusted, the description. What we're gonna do is we're going to pull down the Fedora Apache, this package here. So what we're gonna do is docker pull Fedora Apache, docker pull Fedora slash Apache, and it's gonna pull it from the repo. All right, next, we're going to, here's a couple commands that you can check to find out more about it. So Docker images and Docker info. So you can see, okay, this is more information about that, that package that we just pulled. And here's uh, more information about the container. This is really useful. You can see resources, uh, a lot more information about the container itself. Okay, now let's do a Docker run, and we're gonna start it on port 8080, which is a web port. So docker run minus p 8080, and we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it our science. Fedora Apache. and bin bash. Okay, so now you can see I'm actually in the container itself. I've switched over here, and if I do an ls, you'll see I have a whole new set of libraries. So this is actually a virtual instance inside your Linux. And you can do a top. Oh, it does not have the top command. Maybe it's top ass. No, that one doesn't work. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, okay, so next step we're going to do is modify the HTML file. So let's go VIVAR, okay, var www.html index.html. Okay, we're going to put in a little message here. Welcome to our science club. All right. Next thing we're going to do is start the daemon. So httpd, no hup runs it in the background. Okay, so that's running. Then we're going to check that port 8080 and see if our message is clear. So I have a browser up here, and oh, you can see it refreshed, but that was the message I just typed in. I'm on the internal IP address, and here's the port 8080. So as you can see, it worked. All right, let's head back. Let's see what else we have next. All right, let's do a couple statuses here. Let's, uh, I have another window open. I'm gonna stay in the container. So here, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a PSAUXWW and I'm gonna grep for HTTPD. And you can see HTTP is running. The other one I'm going to, I'm going to look at is Docker PS by say. And this gives you more information about the process, Docker, which port it's running on, the command location, the image, and also inspect. This one's a good one. Uh, the name of the container, and we're gonna pipe it to more to pause the screen. And you can see here, there's a ton of good information about the Docker container. All right, last thing we'll do is we're going to exit, remove, and check that it's running. So we'll exit out of the container. Let's remove it. Nope. Just the name. And you can see it's no longer running. 
So that's it. Basically what we've done is we have pulled down the, the repository Apache container. We've uh, started it up, logged into it, created and modify the default Apache index file, checked it out to make sure it was running, and then exited out, removed it, and it's gone. So that's the basics of a Docker image. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, please let me know some more ideas, especially uh, on the, the Google Cloud. That was interesting to me. But if you have more comments, please comment in the comment section. And also, don't forget to, to subscribe. I'll have a weekly uh, channel updates. Uh, and give me some more ideas on topics. If you'd like to hear more topics, that'd be great. Until next time, cheers.